Throughout time, countries have changed what they consider their biggest security threats. For the US, it used to be Japan, Germany, the Soviet Union, then terrorism, COVID, now China. And international relations has a word for this. It's called securitization. This is the process of how something gets designated as a security issue. From this perspective, security threats are socially constructed, not just naturally given. Basically, issues are not threatening by themselves. It is when we label them and talk about them as security issues that they become security problems. There are three elements required for securitization to succeed. You need a securitizing actor, you need a referent object, and you need an audience. The actors are usually government leaders, politicians, the media, or influential organizations. Their role is to use persuasive language to frame an issue as an existential threat in order to take extraordinary measures against it. Those extraordinary measures can be military interventions, getting emergency powers, limiting people's rights, and even increasing surveillance. Then we have the referent object, which are things that you agree are essential and absolutely need to be protected. This can be the country and its territory, the economy, society, the environment, and even your own identity. The issue you're securitizing must be framed as a threat to the survival of the referent object, the thing you agree absolutely needs to be protected. For example, the survival of the country when it's facing a military attack, or human lives being threatened by a pandemic, or a country's cultural identity threatened by mass immigration. The audience is the group or whoever the actor needs to convince for securitization to succeed. This can be the general public, the political elites, international organizations, or even your own allies. The audience is very important because it has to accept the actor's framing of the issue as an existential threat. If the audience accepts it, then the extraordinary measures can be taken, but if it doesn't, then the efforts will fail. Basically, this is how securitization works. The actor delivers a message which is known as a speech act in order to try to convince the audience of the threat. The actor links the threat to the survival of the referent object. And if the audience accepts it, then the extraordinary measures can be taken. So securitization can sometimes succeed, fail, or both succeed and fail. Some examples of successful securitization is the post 9-11 period. Terrorism was successfully securitized and some of the extraordinary measures were military interventions in the Middle East and increased surveillance. COVID was also securitized and some of the extraordinary measures were lockdowns, mask mandates, travel restrictions, and emergency approvals of vaccines. The Soviet Union was also securitized during the Cold War and some of the measures were the creation of NATO, proxy wars in Vietnam, Korea, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Securitization can also fail if you're unable to convince the audience or you just convince a part of the audience. For example, President Yoon of South Korea tried to do this by framing North Korea as a threat to the country's freedom and safety in order to justify extraordinary powers from martial law. It was able to convince a room with military leaders and impose martial law because of that, but it was unable to convince the other part of the audience, which was the National Assembly, which rushed in the middle of the night to shut it down. And it can also both succeed and fail. For example, the Vietnam War. In the beginning, the war was successfully securitized. There was public support for the war. But then as the war went on, the public opinion shifted 
and the audience no longer accepted the securitization narrative which forced the extraordinary powers that were taken to be stopped. So if we look at the different range of issues that we can talk about, you can put them on three different categories. There's non-politicized issues, politicized issues, and securitized issues. Non-politicized issues are issues that are not relevant for the government to get involved, that don't have much public attention. These are issues like what kind of food or music do you like? Are you a Taylor Swift fan or not? How to properly cook fried rice? Is pickleball a real sport or not? Is the earth round or flat? Then you have politicized issues, which are issues that are in the public debate. They're important for the government, but they're not existential threats. These are issues like gun control, immigration, abortion, healthcare. And then we have securitized issues. These are issues that are framed as existential threats that require extraordinary measures. Issues like terrorism, pandemics. Nowadays, China is being securitized. China, I have to have my China. China, China, because China. And some issues can be moved from being politicized to securitized like immigration and climate change. So when you look at issues now, you can ask yourself, is this issue non-politicized, politicized, or securitized? And how did it become securitized? Why did someone choose to securitize it and bring it to the highest level of priority and call it an existential threat?